Good morning. This is Greg Cooley. I'm one of the Sunday school teachers here at First United Methodist Church in Corinth, Mississippi. Thank you for being with us again this week. And we continue our look at Romans chapter 12. And if you'll recall, um, we're looking at this admonition by Paul of, uh, of what the Christian life ought to look like, how to live this Christian life. And uh, we've talked about the fact that we're going out among wolves. We've talked about the fact that uh, last week uh, we were admonished to watch our thoughts and our thought life. And today we're looking at uh, verse 3 where we're told not to think too highly of ourselves. Um, have you ever known anybody who thought too highly of themselves? Some of us feel like we have cause for thinking highly of ourselves. Many times uh, we're tempted to think highly of ourselves because we're comparing ourselves to other people. Nobody around here can sing as well as I. No one around here knows technology as well as I. No one understands auto mechanics as well as I. No one in the room went to medical school. So, I have a right to think more highly of myself. Here's where I need to stop and tell you one of the facts of life. I was told when I was young um, that there are a number of facts of life that um, I need to be aware of and I need to live by. Now, some of those are the facts of life that your parents told you, all about the birds and the bees and some other things. But here's a fact of life that was shared with me early on. I really have, on the earth, two values. There is a value of my soul, and it is the same value as yours. God came and died for every person. Nobody is worth more, no one's soul is worth more than anybody else's. Right? Yeah, that's right. We're all equal in the sight of God. But practically, on the earth, there's another value. I'll give you an example. Let's say your stomach begins to hurt, and you're bent over in, in pain. It's acute, and, and you barely can breathe. And there's Greg Cooley, with his background in education and degrees and associations. And over here is a surgeon with her background and education and association and degrees. Which of us, at this moment, probably has the most value to you? Hmm? You want me to diagnose your acute issue? You want me to possibly address your acute issue? Or you want her to do it? At this particular moment, yes, both of us, she and I have the same eternal value. Our souls are worth the same. But also at this moment, she probably has your undivided attention. Why? Because of her association's education experience, right? So there were two values. There was her eternal soul value, and then there's her practical value on the earth. Many of us get those mixed up, and we think that at the moment, just because she is worth more in your sight, her opinion is worth more, it's, of, it's high, more highly valued to you presently in your acute pain than I, we think that she's more worth more. She's, she's more uh, elevated. She is a better person. She deserves to think highly of herself. Now, it's not bad for her to take her career seriously. Yes. And to want to be the most she can be and want to give you the most adequate and exemplary care. But, from God's point of view, we're both two souls that his son died for. You see the difference? You see how they should marry and, and live together? This, this, this 
eternal value and this earthly practical value? If I begin to be arrogant, because when I'm, I walk in the room, I know more about money and the tax code than anybody else, and I think I'm a better person, and I think you people should bow down to me. No, I've gone too far. And I really think that's what Paul was telling us here. Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought. You ought to aspire to be the best you can be. You ought to feel good about yourself and have some self-esteem. But don't let it go too far. And don't let this value, this earthly practical value, try to trump the value of your soul compared to somebody else. Because these values, I don't care where you're born, what your race, creed, or color is, in God's eyes are identical. These souls are what his son died for. But practically living day to day on the earth, from time to time you value a financial planner more than anybody else's opinion. From time to time you value a teacher more than anybody else's opinion presently in this acute situation. And from time to time you need a medical profession. And at this point in time, they are more highly valued to you presently, but not eternally. I hope you see the difference, and I hope we understand how they should live in relation to one another. So how should we think of ourselves? There are five or six points I want to make. First of all, you need to assess yourself honestly. You need to step back and say, do I think more highly of myself than I should? Do I go into this meeting with a preconceived notion that I'm not going to agree with anybody in there? It's going to be my way or the highway. Am I honest when I realize that, you know, their opinion is worth something too? Their timetable is worth something, too. Their attitude about cost is worth something, too. Now, maybe in this situation, I'm the expert. But that still doesn't mean that I need to go in with the attitude that I'm more highly regarded than they are, especially from the point of view of God, right? I need to assess myself honestly. Point number one. Now, how do I assess myself? How do you do that? Do I take inventory of my gifts, talents, skills, and abilities? Do I realize that from time to time, I may be the expert in the room that people need, but from time to time, I'm not? Or there are other times when I'm in the room with people who are equally skilled as I. And I should step back and think, you know, I don't need to rule every room I walk in. That's assessing myself honestly. Secondly, I should not take my successes nor my failures too seriously. Now, people who take their failures too seriously have an issue with inferiority. People who just keep their eye on the failures are people who probably are not going to get the most out of themselves. But those of us who see our successes too highly, we never learn anything from our failures because we don't want to admit that we do fail, do we? We all do. The Bible says all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory or the standard of God. All of us have. And as I assess myself honestly, and as I also back up and think, you know, I don't need to take this situation, whether it's a success or a failure, too seriously, I begin to live by this scripture where I'm not thinking too highly of myself. Now, why do you think Paul wanted us to have this admonition. 
Why do you think Paul felt like at this particular point in his ministry, at this particular point in the life of the Roman church, why do you think in Romans chapter 12, Paul stopped and said, I need to address your attitude. Hmm. Maybe there were some interpersonal situations. Maybe there were some people who were holding the church back because of their attitudes. Maybe there were some people that were just a pain in his rump. And maybe he wanted to share where he had been and what he had learned and what they could develop into. So thirdly, how about this one? Celebrate the success and the significance of others before you do your own. So one time I was in the room when a very famous person made a presentation. And at the end of the presentation, many people came up and patted him on the back. And uh, it was a room of about seven or 800 people, significant people. And he was being lauded for having done such a great job with this presentation. And how it did a great job of communicating. And how he was engaging. He was getting many compliments. And at the end of the presentation, when he was getting these compliments, and people were patting him on the back, and he was off the dais, off the podium, and down among the people working through the ballroom. At the back of the ballroom was where I was standing. And he stopped there and he said, I'm going to come back tomorrow. And I said, well, you should. They made you feel good about yourself. You did a great job. He said, yeah, but I need to tell them about how all of that is not all about me. I said, what? He said, I need to remind them of the people who work for me who did some of the research involved in that presentation. I need to remind them of all of the people who work for me who gave me the time to put the presentation together and to practice and have all my points in my head and on the screen like I needed to deliver them. I need to bring some attention to those people in analysis and research. I need to bring attention to my family who gave up something so dad could be away. And you know, I learned something that day from that man. Yes, when called upon to make a presentation and the lights go on, right now it's all about you and how well you perform. But how did you get here? I love it when athletes say something about mom, some, something about the former coach, something about the strength and conditioning trainer that are with them. Because, you know, I am partially here because of the activities of others. Yeah, you're here because you worked hard. You're here because you studied. You're here because you're capable. You're here when the light goes on because you can perform. But how did you get that capability? And how did you get to where you are? Probably a spouse, a parent, a teacher, a mentor, a coach, a leader, a boss, all of those are part of the mixture, the recipe for who we are. And we need to learn not just to take the limelight ourselves, but to give some significance to others. Kind of deflect some of it. Some of that limelight needs to be directed to others. Maybe those people behind the scenes. Next. Don't demand respect. Don't demand it. It's kind of like chasing a butterfly. 
Here's the respect butterfly and you're trying to chase it. Even if you find it, it's always wanting to leave you. I'm going to tell you something. You'll never be respected as much as your ego says you should be. If you only listen to your ego, your ego will say, they don't appreciate me. They don't understand what I'm going through. They don't understand what I did to get here. And all those things may be right. But when you concentrate on those things, it hurts your relationships and it makes you think more highly of yourself from time to time than you should. Success and respect follow those who can perform. And respect is earned. It'll come to you. It may not come in as big a doses as you demand or your ego says you deserve. But that may be God trying to help you. Rain it in. Rain it in. Because you know what happens? And Paul knew this. What happens when my self-perceptions, my self-esteem, and uh, my concentration on me gets too high, and I think too highly of myself, I ostracize people. I alienate people. I may not be as effective as I could be for the kingdom because today it's all about me. And today, maybe God needed to be all about Dave or John or Karen or Nancy. But if it's all about me, what happens when they need the limelight or they need the pat on the back? What happens when God wants us to use the influence we have to help somebody else? Maybe someone with an inferiority complex. In Proverbs, we're told by <laughs> probably the most wise person who ever walked the planet other than Jesus, this in Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 2. Let others praise you and not by your own mouth. Let a stranger praise you not by your own lips. We should, if we let others praise us and we don't praise ourselves and we don't think too highly of ourselves, we should seek to be humble. Seek to be humble. I seek to be admired. I seek to be the center of attention. Well, that's the temptation. But Paul is telling us, don't think too highly of yourself. And we're told by Scripture to seek out times when we can show humility. And you really can show humility best when you're on the top, when the limelight is on you, when you don't feel humble. If you show humility, the limelight's then on the humility and not on you. You can see humility best when the limelight is at its brightest. And lastly, Jesus died for every one of us. Yeah. In Galatians chapter 6 and verse 14, we're told this, I will never boast of anything except the cross of Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified. I have been crucified to the world also, but I boast only in the death of Christ. He, cried, he died for us all. We all should realize that this one value we have, this eternal value that doesn't compare to, to the value we have on the earth, that changes. Because I walk in the room and you have the acute pain, 
presently, I don't have much value to you. My opinion is of very little value when there's a surgeon in the room. However, we walk in a room and we start talking about finances or the tax code or estate planning or investment selection. Uh, that may be my time. So this value fluctuates. Some days the light's on me. Some days there it is not. But this value never changes. The value we all get at the foot of Christ. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. And I need to remind myself, we need to remind ourselves as Christians, if we want to be attractive to the world, we need to remind ourselves of this last principle a lot. Jesus died for all, not just me. So, if we take these five or six principles and use them, we can more accurately respond to this admonition in Romans chapter 12 about our self-perceptions and our self-esteem. Don't think too highly of yourself. It's okay to be proud of yourself when you accomplish something. It's okay to receive a little bit of limelight from time to time. Don't dwell on it. Move on. Show humility. And eventually... That will be more attractive and be more respected by those who are looking for someone to help them on this life journey. I hope today your self-perception will be in balance. That you will not have an inferiority complex, but you'll also not be egotistical. And that where you find this balance, at the foot of the cross, where the ground is level, is where you're most of value to our Father. May God bless you.